Hi, I'm Pastor Bill Vigue of Meet of the Word Ministries. I want to talk again about the parable of the laborers in God's vineyard that Jesus told. And it was, again, Jesus' story, and it's an illustration. Now, keep in mind, this is not talking about just winning souls and how he's going to, you know, bring people into the kingdom of God. He's talking about rewarding those that will accept the call and labor in their life. And, and the whole subject was in regards to the reward system and regards to God's business sense, the way God manages people, you know, business relationships, uh, labor relationships. It's all that's all part of it. But keep in mind the fact that Jesus is talking about the subject of greed. A rich young ruler had come and wanted to, you know, you know, find out what he must do to get saved. And Jesus said, keep the commandments. And his response was, I've kept all the commandments, and of course, that's one of the reasons why he was a rich young ruler, because he'd been blessed. But then Jesus said, one thing you lack, and that one thing was to go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. Because he trusted in his riches, he went away grieved and sad. In other words, there was more greed in his heart than generosity in his heart. And Jesus was talking about generosity. And of course, Peter opened his mouth later on, and he, and he asked the question, Lord, what are we going to receive? We've forsaken all for, for the gospel's sake. And Jesus said, no man has forsaken houses and homes and lands and, and, and husbands and wives and family for the gospel's sake and my sake, and that they shall not receive in this life a hundredfold plus in the life to come eternal life. So then Jesus gives the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. And he goes on to say that there was a homeowner, a house owner, or a land, a landowner, and this was God our Father, who it says went up early in the morning to look for hirers, to hire laborers to enter into his workplace, into his vineyard. And when he agreed, he says, so this tells us that there was some kind of a contract. And this again refers to the Old Testament contract, the Mosaic law that the Jews were under. Once they had agreed together, they went into the labor field. The chosen people went out there and labored. But God didn't quit quit searching for laborers. It says that in the third hour, the sixth hour, and the ninth hour, and then in the in the eleventh hour, he kept going into the marketplaces looking for people that didn't have a job, and he put them to work. And in all of these other categories, he goes on to say, you work in my field, and that which is right I will give you. He didn't make any agreement. He didn't promise to give him anything. He didn't say a half a penny for half a day's work or anything like that. He simply left it up to his discretion. He said, that which is right. Now that's a simple parable about the stages of how God tenaciously is and steadily is looking constantly, earnestly looking for other people to work in his earth right now, witnessing of his great power and testifying of his goodness and his mercies, of telling other people about the grand, glorious grace and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all laborers. Now, this parable also tells us something that's important, and that is you have value. It agrees with what Jesus said in another place when he said, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. This parable also tells us that God depends on us. He wouldn't have worked so hard to find people to go into his field, into the earth and labor if he didn't need you. He's looking for people. Many are called, but few are chosen. Or few make the choice to really lay down their life and say, I surrender, Lord, I'll serve you. So anyways, finally, at the end of the day, when the evening was come, it says that the homeowner called the steward, which of course is the Lord Jesus Christ, and says, gather all of my labors together and give them their hire, give them their pay for the deeds that they did. Now this is where it becomes extremely interesting, because this is going to take place just before we enter into the millennial reign, at the end of the tribulation period, we are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, all believers, Old Testament believers, that believed in the coming of the Messiah, and even the New Testament believers that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ in this life. We're going to be gathered together to receive rewards for everything that we did in our bodies, both good and bad. This is not a reward of, of God deciding, you know, some of you are going to go to heaven and some of you are going to go to hell. No, all of these people are saved. All of these are hired laborers. All of these are now about to get rewarded. They've already been rewarded with the, the new birth. They've already been rewarded also with the resurrection of their dead bodies. And they've got a brand new body or the last few that remain at the, till the end will be raptured bodies. And they stand there and they begin to get the rewards. And look what happens. It comes and they, he, he says, let them receive the rewards, the last first and then the, then the first last. 
And so the ones that had worked the 11th hour comes first and he said, this is what is right for you. I'm going to give you a penny. And then right on down the line until the first come and they're expecting, supposing it says, that they're going to get more because they have borne the whole day. And he gives them what he had agreed to with them. One penny, good manager, keeps his agreement, keeps his word. But immediately they begin to murmur and complain and grumble against the good man of the house. And it says here, they say this, uh, uh, these have wrought but one hour and you have made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I do not do any wrong. Neither, did you not agree with me for a penny? Take that which is what which I've given you and hired you for and go your way. And then he says, I will give unto this last, even as I will, or as unto thee. He said, I will do it. I will make that decision. Uh, and then he says, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thine eye become evil because I am good or because I am generous? They were murmuring, they were grumbling, they were complaining. Here is, the, here is a state of where we're going to need to be sanctified ourselves. Well, my time is up here. I want to cover a little bit more ground on this here tomorrow because I think it's important. But keep your focus on the, the main issues. All right, God bless.